All right, what's going on, people? I'm back. It's been a while. AverageJ.com. Check me out over there. I hate Average Podcasts. Y'all know what it is. Um, I'm excited. I finally got a guest, so I'm kind of excited about that. So it's kind of interesting. Um, this is a little different uh, place I'm going to take this thing. Because, of course, the name of the podcast is I Hate Average Podcast. So I want to talk about things in a different light than most people talk about it. So um I actually had a uh, interesting guest. His name is uh, Mr. Jones. He uh, He's the owner of a couple of uh, different uh, porn websites. And besides, you know, instead of just talking about women and sex and things like that, we actually got into a very interesting discussion about the business of um, the porn industry and the business of, um, of running different various uh, porn websites. So, I found him to be very intelligent. Uh, we got some serious discussion, even though we're talking about kind of a lighthearted subject. Um, it it kind of sounds humorous because we really got in debt and really got, uh, you know, very detailed about something that's, you know, people doesn't feel to be as serious. But this is his livelihood, so he <laughs> he takes it very serious. He studies this. He um, looks up different things. He takes um, porn series, so you can't blame him, that's his craft, that's how he pays his bills, that's how he takes care of his family, so, um, without further ado, uh, check it out, um, uh, if, I don't know, if I don't think I said anything foul, but if I did, um, I'll say pause ahead of time, <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, check out this interview with Mr. Jones from, um, well, he has a lot of different websites, Y'all will name it at the end of this show. Hey, what's up, everyone? I got Orion Jones. He's one of the founders of uh, thefatness.com, as uh, many other sites that you guys also enjoy. Um, Just giving us some info about uh, the porn industry, more importantly, the the New York porn scene. So uh, how are you doing, Mr. Jones? Uh, I'm doing fine. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is actually you one of my first guests on uh, our podcast. We're trying out. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Um, so, how long have you been involved in the Fatness dot com? Uh, for about six years now. Oh wow. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, me personally, I fell upon. I kind of fell upon it just doing some. Uh, field research, as you could say. But anyway, I, uh, I fell upon it. The, the, the thing that interests me about the site was the women, they seem like uh, like the everyday women. They don't seem like the, the usual, uh, you know, the usual porn site that you see, the the, uh, the pinup girl or the, 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 size, uh, the size six girl. So um, what gave you that inspiration is to try something different? Uh, it's my own personal preference. I always prefer more BBW voluptuous type of women in my personal life. So okay. I figured, you know, I figured there were other other guys that were into the same thing. I mean, there were already other sites that uh, featured such models, but I wanted to present them in a in a different way because most, most sites have a particular format. Most adult entertainment go by a particular format. Whereas uh, me, I just uh, decided to escape the format and just kind of like wing it and see what happens. Okay, cool. And uh, trust me, we appreciate that. The thing I liked about it, it seems like it has like a more urban urban feel to it. Um, I see you also got, are you, you part of, I think they have like the, the Mexican site also, you're part of that too? Yeah, so uh, the Mexican gorditas, that was that was a brainchild of a, a man known as uh, Manuel Barrancos. He's been around for a minute. He used to sell his uh, content online for a while. He's been in the game for probably about 12, maybe 15 years. Um, and he wanted to explore a new platform for distributing his content. So then uh, he got in contact with me, knowing that not only do I produce material, but I'm also a webmaster and I also resell adult content. Um, 
and I think he also respected I'm very uh, I'm very keen on piracy. It's a very uh, big issue for me because uh, a lot of people like to try to rip off one's content to profit on on their own, and I think that also attracts other people who are interested in running their own adult websites or just want to produce content and not necessarily have to worry about the technology or bulk of the promotion work or anything like that. Okay. That's cool. Uh, also, that's also what I want to get into. What do you, what do you as a webmaster and having your own content and, and owning your own website, what do you think about like the tube sites, like the lobster tubes or the X video? What do you, what do you think of that? Is that a useful tool or is it, do you think of it as privacy? It's, it's piracy, honestly, but um, in the beginning, they caused, when they first started coming out, they caused problems because the, the valuability of porn comes from its taboo and its newness, right? So when the tube sites first came out and they were new, everybody was gearing towards those particular sites. And then at the same time, you had the advent of the file lockers, um, basically websites that pay you to get downloads for whatever files you upload into their system and pay you to uh, pay, basically give people payouts if they're able to garner memberships to these file lockers through the content of which they have uploaded on the website. All right. um, so I feel like the tube site phenomena has evolved to a point where now it exists and it's part of the porn culture, and I don't have a choice but to use it as a tool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, that, that's actually how I found you out. And uh, there's, I've seen one thing, and it, it actually led me to, you know, to look at other things that pertain to your site. So I, I guess it, it was useful, but it's also I can understand that you want to protect your content. Exactly. The thing about the, the tube sites is the longer they exist, the less of the less of uh, the less competition they really are. Because what what happens is that people eventually see the same content on these tube sites over and over again and the newness expires. So eventually um, to recapture that sense of newness some people start to become willing to pay for pay for porn again. This is why we still have the Bang Brothers, the Brazzers producing content, Score Group, Plumper Pass, Busty Baby Doll. They're just pumping out new stuff all the time. Okay. I mean, what me, so what do you think about, uh, I also seen, I don't know if it's true, but I've seen some of the food sites now, they're going towards getting regular people to put up content and they're paying them. Um, do you view that as competition or you just view it as just something that's just going on? I view it as something that's just going on. It's a different, it's a different type of niche. Number one, people who, people who are generally self-filmers are not expert in like the angle the audience wants to see. They're just enjoying themselves and, and they give us the pleasure of viewing that, which is great. Um, but eventually even that gets tiring. And True. when you're True. dealing with when you're dealing with a more kind of like pro am type production, which is what I'm I guess genre that I am, or more professional productions, they take the concept of angle presentation as more of a science than I guess a side effect. Okay. Cool. So I I guess I, I gotta ask this for the for the other guys out there. So are, are the women that you get in your site in particular, are they amateurs or are they casted? Like do you have agents that call you and say, I have this girl for you, or they're actually women that just are interested in doing porn? It is, it is both. So when I started, okay. it was, when I started, it was like, if you notice, a lot of the women in the beginning, you don't really see their faces. These are, Women that I've oh, dealt okay. with personally, women that I've known personally, okay. and um, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, it, it was kind of like, it's sort of kind of like a voyeuristic 
a voyeuristic view into my own personal sex life. This kind of glamorized a little bit, um, so it looks more presentable for the camera. And then okay. eventually, as it, that grew, um, agents were agents found a way to contact me in order and introduce me to a certain talent. And um, then I get some I get some talent from there. But I would say a bulk, most of my talent still comes from just um, just women nowadays. It's women hitting me up and like, oh, I'm interested in dealing with the adult industry. How do I get in? And so, if I find that, yeah, go ahead. Now I just, I guess he was going to ask my question. Yeah, next sense. I just wanted to know, like, what's the percentage of women that you turn down? Oh my, I turn down more than I accept. Let's just say that. Really? So, uh. yes, I would say that. Let's say, like, in an average week, I might get maybe three women directly on their own contacting me about shooting and either I will reject all of them or <laughs> I will reject two, you know, two, two out of three. Uh, okay. It's interesting. And, and I just, I just feel that the, the, the nuance or, or the new niche, I guess the trend that's going on in porn seems to be the pro-am or the amateur, I think people are kind of tired. Even though they still exist, you know, the Brazers and the Bang Brothers, they still exist, but I think people are, I guess, the voyeuristic side, they kind of want to be more on the inside of what the everyday person is doing. I agree. I agree. I think that, you know, porn porn is a fan. Popularity of porn, is, you know, was only started because of a taboo, and then eventually... It started merging with the idea of fantasy. And then that's where you get all the super professional content. Now, porn is no longer a taboo. And the, a lot of, let's say, actual mainstream movies or more mainstream productions start to kind of fulfill, like, the whole storyline fantasy. So what's left, you know? People want to see something that's real, something that doesn't look to stage, which is where a lot of my stuff comes in. Like, for instance, when I get talent, I instruct them that if you do not feel anything, if, this is, if you don't like it, don't make any fake noises. It's annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> you know, if you are, yeah, some, look, some, some women are silent. Like, the, when they get it on, they're silent because in their lives they have children, so they've trained themselves to not make all these crazy noises or you know they live with their parents like you can tell the difference and so when they do it you know you look at their facial expressions and from their facial expressions you know what she's feeling how she's moving you know how she's feeling you know um i've gotten a lot of i've gotten customers before who's like oh well she ain't feeling nothing because she ain't making no noise i'm like no look at her face look how she's moving yeah. There's a reason why she doesn't make noise. This particular person probably is not a loud, you know, fake moan, crazy sounds type of person. Yeah, and, and it's more realistic. Uh, you're not going to meet just average woman who's just going to scream all crazy. And, you know, it, it, it seems more realistic. Like like you said, sometimes you might meet a woman and she'll take you to her house and she has children. She's not going to be screaming. So it, it seems like more of a, a real life scenario, which which I appreciate, <laughs> just because my my vieweristic side, I, I appreciate. Exactly, I feel like, um, like me personally, my my favorite type of porn is the porn where I can tell the woman is really enjoying herself and she's getting off. Um, like the porn I watch, for instance, there's this one guy on um. On uh, I think he's uh, on X videos and X hamster, and he's called I Need Two, the number two habit, and it's mostly BBW girls, and like okay. you can tell like these women really enjoy, you know, doing whatever they do with this guy. Like it's it's genuine, it's real, it's not staged, it's not fake, it's not like they're there because I have to get this done so I can make money to pay my rent today. You know, it's like, yeah, it's just, you know, they're I really having fun. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
which is always a good thing. Um, so, okay, so you have the two sites. So within your career with porn, what's next for you? Um, my main background is actually engineering and uh, engineering and software. Um, okay. So I feel like the future for me is going to be less on the end of a performer and more on the end of developing tools and uh, more uh, more tools, more innovations in, in terms of the adult business. Like, for instance, right now, they have the Connect Pal thing, right? Um, okay. I feel like if I was to, you know, I might develop something in tandem with that, or I might develop a new platform to help people make much more, uh, make much more money with their, with their content. The real money in this business is not necessarily in front of the camera. It's really, in my opinion, behind the camera. The guy who okay. runs the tube site is a millionaire. The guy who runs the score group is a millionaire. The guy who, the guy who you know, developed ConnectPal is well on his way to becoming something bigger. But the yeah. guy you see in front of the camera, you know, he'll be in front of the yeah. camera for like 15 years and he'll never be wealthy. Yeah. He'll be tired, but he won't be wealthy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> sure. So are there, I guess, are there particular um, talent that you prefer working with more than others? Um. <clears throat> Yes, yes. I would say that um, in in terms of attitude, um, I prefer talent that are not like uh, super hardcore business types. Okay. Because then what happens is that their performance is the same performance they do with everyone else. It's like it's a script to them. Yeah, yeah. Right, and and I They're feel not like in the moment. They're not in the moment. He, Exactly. And my niche doesn't cater to that. Um, I also do prefer, like, SSBBW, personally. That's just what I'm more attracted to, even though I started shooting more, uh, you know, slim, thick, thick thick women. It's different. But still the best is like the SSBBWs. I I see... I, I understand why you're going in that direction because that seems to be like the more of the everyday girl, the slim thick, not the BBW or not the slim, but like right in between. That seems like to be the, uh, that seems like, the, you know, the girl next door type. And and that's the thing. It, honestly, it, it's easier for me to get talent on the slim thick side of things or the thick side of things than the BBW. And that's part of the reason why I kind of started making content with women of that stature also. And I realized that, you know, in itself, it's still, it's still also profitable. It's just the nature of the competition in that realm is different, where the nature of the competition in the BBW realm is different. Like, I've, I wouldn't say I've mastered the BBW niche, but I know how to profit from the BBW niche because I've been doing that so, so much. Whereas, like now with this new, with this new type of niche, it's a little different. It's a little bit of different challenges. There's still some learning involved and everything like that. The way I have to promote it, the way I have to present things, are very different. But it's getting there. Yeah. So, why do you think? I guess from the beginning, um, why do you think? I'm sure you've seen since you've been doing it six years. Why do you think in the last, I would say, year or so, or maybe two years? the BBW niche has become so popular? Because um, because entertainment is, it started, it started really kind of like with the uh, modeling industry, starting to okay. allow more, uh, more curvy women within the mainstream. And then... Okay also with hip-hop starting to embrace it. Like, ever since that line Drake put, like, I like my women BBW, it just completely changed <laughs> everything. 
And it really you, did. You, now you seen you literally seen as a webmaster, you seen the uptick. You seen Oh yeah. My my numbers, my my checks, you know, <laughs> has <laughs> definitely reflected that. I will uh, say my BBW sites do better than any of my non BBW sites. So hip hop, okay, like like I would say, um, you could see use the Drake the Drake line. Also, last year there was a line about um, the eating ass like groceries. Is like is that something that that you're mindful of, or is that something that people are searching for when they're looking up for? That they they looking specifically for certain things that's popular nowadays. Or? Of course, I mean now. You know, the thing is, is that uh, pornography is doing a very good job of crossing over to the mainstream. But that's not because of pornography itself. It's just because now people are being, are feeling a lot less ashamed of expressing what it is that they're truly into. So, that's like, true. for instance, you have these sex tapes coming out, you know, with the Mimi and the Nico, and now supposedly Kylie has a sex tape with, you know, Kylie or whatever. And... Yeah. It's like these things have become a lot less damaging to celebrities, but a lot more True. profitable for them, too. Because yeah. imagine how much money Kim Kardashian, Nene, Nico, and if there is such a thing between Tyga and Kylie, how much money they're going to really pull and how that yeah. is so not going to hurt them. True. Imagine, well, imagine how much the tube sites are going to make, too. <laughs> of course. Of course. I mean... The thing is, is that the real people who make money in, in terms of being in front of the camera through adult entertainment are the famous people, the people who already given themselves some type of celebrity. They will be the ones that will be able to make a million off a sex tape. Yeah. So just by you knowing all these things, so I guess you, you kind of stay abreast of what's going on within the porn industry. You kind of, you're constantly researching, you're constantly... Uh, Staying up on the game. Yeah, I mean, I try to stay on top of everything. Of course, porn industry being one of them, you know. Um, you know, I stay on top of, like, you know, politics, science, news, uh, financial data, since I have a slight interest in, like, finance and, and stock investments and stuff like that. Um, but in the end, when you keep track of so many different things, they all start to tie together. That's true. I definitely agree with that. So is it a good thing that, that I guess, well, maybe not, but I guess you can answer this. Is it a good thing that, that porn is becoming less taboo as a, if, for business? Is it good for business that porn is becoming less taboo? <clears throat> no, it's not good for business. Um, because the thing is, is that um, it makes it so much more available now. People are not afraid to just put it out there, and the tube sites are just so easily available where someone wants to just get off, they're just like, all right, I'm going to go to X videos and X hamster and put in the keyword and then just get off and I'll be done, you know? Whereas, like, yeah. back in the day, it's like, all right, you know, you get off, you use your imagination, but, like, if you really want to see something, you'd you have, have to, like, here. pay for it. Yeah. Or, like, if I did this if I did this 20 years ago, what I was doing now, I'd be a multimillionaire. Like, sure. Now, not so much. The people, like, and, and here's the best example, right? <clears throat> the most taboo type of porn right now is the stuff that you see on Two Girls in One Cup <clears throat> or Ghetto Gaggers. Okay. So they're and really extreme companies, stuff. They... Yeah, those companies make bank. <laughs> those are the companies that, those are the companies that make millions of dollars a year. Not companies like mine or or browser. Well, not well. Browser is probably, but yeah, not companies like mine or or like you know, Bussy Baby Doll or even Plumper Press. Plumper Press probably don't make millions in a year, you know. And they have some sure. beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful polished material. But you're gonna have like you know ghetto gaggers, <laughs> you know, probably yeah. netting probably like four million in a year or something like that, because it's just so. But- it is too but also on a scale, they have when you have those extreme, the extreme content. They also have less content, so they're still making that much money with less content. 
Exactly, yes, of course. The demand for taboo is so high, but the supply is low. Yeah. Therefore, whoever, whoever provides that supply is going to kick off. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. I mean, the, me personally, I can't, I can't watch that stuff. I'll get sick right now. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here. Like, I get very sick when I watch it. And for me personally, like, um, I can't even, like, I mean, I could easily, um, you know, put some money together, invest, and get a team to film stuff like Ghetto Guys and things like that. And, you know, be in direct competition with them and even give it a more of a gritty type of look or whatever, hire a bunch of white guys to ravage some poor, you know, black soul or something like that. I mean, I'm a black man myself, but... Yeah, 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 I know. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know but the thing is, is that... But just like, the, the taboo of it would, would make it... I would, I would most definitely become a wealthy person. But then there's a more... There's a moral objection I actually have to effective of content. Like, I feel like sexuality should not be used as a, t- as a tool to destroy or break someone. It was, it really was a tool. Sexuality only existed for procreation. And heck, if we're going to, if we're, that's what we're going to do, we're going to have a good time doing it. You know? Sure. Sexuality, yeah. is, sexuality is about, should, if it's not about procreation, let it be about intimacy. Let it be about feeling good. Let it be about pleasuring and, and sati- satisfying each other, not about demeaning, degrading, and hurting each other. I definitely. I, I, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, and I thank you also, again, for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, can you uh, just shout out a couple of your sites real quick? Of course. Um, the, my main site is thefatness.com. Um, I have uh, Kitty's XXX Playhouse, Miss Kitty Galore, um, MexicanGorditas.com. Um, everyone knows about uh, MissSuperDomeBooty.com. Um, I have a new one called uh, PrincessPeachXL.com. Trying to get that going. Um, also, IronBooty.com, which is also a new one. Um, and then for the for the gentlemen that like the uh, more slim thick variety, I have fatandfine.com, which is my urban modeling site, and Dime City XXX, which is the hardcore slim thick thick girl site for those who are not into the BBW thing. All right. Thank you so much for your time again. And uh, if I can get you on again, please do and. If anything you need, let me know, and uh, have a good night. Most definitely. You too, man. All right, so there you have it, my first episode with a guest. Um, I think it was kind of interesting. Just want to show different facets of life. Um, people always have judgments on different things. They want to, you know, they look at porn, the porn industry, the adult industry. They view it in a certain way. Um, and when I ran across this guy, I thought it was interesting how intelligent he was and how seriously took his craft and hope you guys took what I took out of it just see things a little differently and um that's the my objective for this podcast is just I hate average podcasts just want to talk about have different discussions with different people about different things um in a different way and I think I'm achieving that so far and I'm excited got a couple of other guests a couple of other surprises lined up and um I'll check you guys out next week. Also, subscribe to uh, my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Twitter. All of it is I Hate Average J A Y. I Hate Average J A Y. Um, also, if you got any tips or any suggestions or any comments, you want to email me, you can email me at show at averagej.com. Show at averagej.com. Also, check out AverageJ.com because I've been writing a lot more. So I have a couple of pieces that you might want to check out. I just wrote something about um, the NBA uh, playoffs. Um, three three different reasons why um, the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> they ended up beating OKC in a surprising fashion. But I broke down three different areas of why they won. Um, the title is called Success Leaves Clues. 
So you might be interested in that. So check that out also. So always check out the website, averagej.com. I'll check you guys out next week. Thanks for listening.